It's time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, in his recently released memoir, Prince Harry gleefully dragged his family and country through the mud, giving just about everyone from the press to the palace a right royal bashing. But some of his most hurtful comments were reserved for Princess Diana's former butler, devoted friend, she described him as her rock, Paul Burrell, a man who showed him nothing but kindness as he grew up. Listen. One day, the package contained a series of memos from the palace comms team about a delicate matter. Mummy's former butler had penned a tell-all, which actually told nothing. It was merely one man's self-justifying, self-centering version of events. My mother once called this butler a dear friend, trusted him implicitly. We did too. Now this. He was milking her disappearance for money. It made my blood boil. Now, even though Paul has some sympathy for Harry, revealing how even as a young child, the so-called spare was made to feel less important than his older brother William by, given, by being given a few sausages with his breakfast, the savage jibes have still cut him deep and reduced him to tears. So now, in a UK TV exclusive, hot on the heels of Jeremy Clarkson's forced apology to Meghan for his hurtful comments, Paul is speaking out and he joins us live now from the US. So, Paul, look, so much to unpack after the past week. But can you first talk to me about what it was like to hear Harry talking about you in Spare, which is now the fastest selling autobiography of all time, in such unsavoury terms? Well, Dan, I'm saddened and disappointed that Harry couldn't even mention my name. He called me the butler. And even my family, my boys who grew up with William and Harry in the nursery said to me, Dad, why did he do that? Why why would he do that when he sacrificed? Uh, well, he, he actually moans and groans about people sacrificing him on a PR altar. He's just done the same to his family and his friends and including myself. I'm just a victim of, of his book now. I loved his mother very much, and I'm devoted to her memory and devoted to um, the memory of uh, our late queen. Harry knows that. Harry knows me. Harry knows he's grown up with me. If he had something to say to me, why couldn't he have called me and told me that he wasn't happy with me? Why did he have to put it in a book? I just don't understand his tactics. I, I know how he feels. I know because I was there. Mm -hmm. But this pu public humiliation of his family is not the answer. No. He, he wants to get his truth out there. I got my truth out there, Harry, in my book, which if you had read it, it you said it was a tell-all but told nothing. So are you contradicting yourself? <laughs> and actually, what it was was a devoted story um, which came on the back of my trial. I was accused of stealing yep. items from the estate of Diana Princess Wells. I didn't have um, the chance to have a defence because the prosecution went first for two weeks and then the Queen intervened and stopped the trial. And so I was left bankrupt, penniless, couldn't pay my mortgage. Uh, my wife pawned her jewellery to feed our children. We cashed in our children's life insurance policies so that we could survive. So what would any other father and husband yes. do to, yes, and to also, help his family? I did. It should be I wrote said, my defence. Yeah, and it should be said, though, that in the intervening years since, you have remained the most loyal supporter of Princess Diana on Earth. You always stand up for the yes. memory of the People's Princess. And actually, Harry should be thanking you for that. Because actually, within the royal family, as you know, they have tried to move on from the memory of Diana, and you have never allowed that to happen. Uh, but what do you no. make of the fact, Paul, that he talks so much, Harry, about compassion and how you need to lift people up? But actually, this book... Mm just tears people down. You know, whether it be uh, the matron who was really ugly, he claims, uh, at his school, his own brother, uh, his stepmother, Camilla. He's actually showing yeah. 
a really vile and nasty side to his character, and it's anything but compassionate, I would argue. When he he advocates mental health issues, uh, he's spinning all of this um, rubbish and, and telling people how bad they are. How do you think they feel? How do you think Pat at his school feels being called greasy and fat? How does her family feel? How does my family feel? How do my boys feel? How does William feel? How does William's children feel about their uncle um, telling stories about their mum? So, Harry, you, you can't do this. You can't have everything your way. Listen, the Queen didn't pin the Royal Victorian Medal to my chest and say to me, Paul, this is from me and Diana for your loyal service for nothing. I no, indeed. stood beside the Queen for 11 years and Diana for 10. I remain devoted to them. I'm very saddened by Harry's actions. I'm saddened by the path he's taking. Uh, he, should, he should actually stop. His mother would say, shh, Harry, be quiet. Mm. I, well, I was going to ask you about so that. I, I was going to ask you about that, Paul, because in one of the US TV interviews, Harry did actually invoke the memory of his mother and tried to suggest that she would understand what he was doing with his attacks on William. But everything that I have ever read and learnt about Diana through speaking to people who knew her was that. She was absolutely committed to her boys remaining rock solid and always there for each other. And she understood that Harry needed to provide support for William. So you actually knew her. You saw all of this. Surely she would be disappointed by the way that Harry has attacked her son, her eldest son, on an international scale in the most grotesque and vicious of ways. She'd be devastated. Harry's wrong. Harry's viewing this through the eyes of an 11-year-old boy whose heart broke when his mother died. I lived with his mother in her adult years. I can tell you what she would think and feel now. She'd say, Harry, be quiet, because you've done enough damage. Your job was to support your brother on his way to be king and to be there for him. That's what Diana thought. She thought that Harry would always be there for William, would help him in his role. And that's not going to be the case because I can't see this uh, rift um, mending anytime soon. I don't think it will ever really mend because there's been too much said. And once things have been said, they can't be unsaid. Paul, I feel like Harry over the weekend has actually started to blackmail the royal family. He's saying that without an apology... Uh, from the institution and presumably from the new king and his brother, uh, he will continue these revelations. He says he's got another 400 pages and the next book ready to go that contain even worse allegations about uh, Prince William and King Charles. At the same time, you have a real push from certain quarters of the royal family saying that Charles needs to reconcile with Harry. But surely they actually have to stand up to this man who is threatening them, who is blackmailing them. I agree with you, Dan. I think they should stand up to him. I don't think he should be invited to the coronation. How could he possibly sit there in Westminster Abbey, in the house of God, amongst his family, watching his father be crowned king after all that he said? It would be the, the height of hypocrisy. He couldn't possibly come. And anyway, ask the people of our country, the country who is abandoned, the people who is abandoned for another country, you ask them what they think and feel. Because I think the people of our country wouldn't want to see him at the coronation. I think he should stay no, absolutely home not. with his wife in America. I think he should too. And, and Paul, just funny, is it true that Harry even got annoyed as a little kid because William got an extra sausage at breakfast time? That's true. <laughs> I'm afraid that is true. That's just one of those things that happened in the Royal Nursery when the nanny would give William three sausages and say, to, and Harry would say, well, why has he got three and I've only got two? Well, he needs feeding up because he's going to be king. And that put it in a nutshell, really, because everyone around William was whispering in his ear, one day you're going to be king 
and bolstering him up and leaving Harry to one side. So I do sympathize with Harry. I do know what happened to him. I saw it happen myself, but I cannot forgive him for what he's doing right now. So stop no, it, Harry. No, couldn't stop agree more. It. And look, Paul, I know you were very upset about being mentioned in the book, but you know what? Harry called me a sad little man in the book. I think it's a compliment. I actually think it's a compliment because this man is attacking great people. Great people. And I'd much rather be one of the people attacked in this book than one of his woke propagandists who are actually all awful people. Uh, but Paul Burrell, so great to talk. Yes. Chin up. Thank you, Paul.